Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a crock pot meatloaf with uh, potatoes to go with it that I'm going to wrap in foil. And it's just an all-in-one dish that you can just put on there and leave it um, and go away to wherever you're going to go, come back and have it done. So I'm going to go put my hair up and I will come back and show you how to do it. Okay, so here's a few things that you're going to need to get started. We're going to need a few other things besides this, but this will give you a general idea. I took some potatoes, just some medium sized potatoes, cleaned them, poked them with a fork and wrapped them up in the foil. And our crock pot, I've got kind of an oval crock pot, um, and I have lined it with foil where I can use these handles to lift it back out when it's done. And also you can lift it up and kind of drain the grease off of it because it is going to, you know, it's a meatloaf and you're using hamburger, so it is going to have a little bit of uh, grease. Okay, so um, all I've done is sprayed that inside, uh, inside the, uh, on the foil, sprayed on top of it so that when I put my meatloaf it doesn't stick to it. That's kind of optional. It just makes it kind of easier for me. Um, another thing, I've got our meatloaf. I probably have like maybe a pound and a half of me uh, of meatloaf. Of, uh, Ground beef, I'm sorry, you can use ground beef or ground chuck. If you use ground beef, it's going to be a little bit greasier. You can use ground chuck if you have that. I don't have any chuck right now, so we're going to use ground beef for this, and we'll just drain it. Um, some bread, some stale, you know, no, well, maybe not, but old, you know, bread you need to get rid of is fine for this. We're going to put it in the food processor and make our breadcrumbs to go into our meatloaf. I have about five cloves of garlic that I've just kind of chopped up. And that's a lot of garlic, but as it cooks, it's not going to be so strong. That's optional. If you don't like all that garlic, you don't have to use it, or you can even use garlic powder. This is optional. I like garlic, um, so and it's going to be cooked, so it's not going to be quite as strong uh, once it cooks. So this is just totally up to you. If you like garlic, go for it. If not, you can use garlic powder, or you can just you know leave it out. You can use your regular uh, meatloaf recipe for this. And it's going to be just fine, however you want. But I'm going to show you kind of uh, an easy recipe to go with it. So either way, but you can use the method uh, for the crock pot meatloaf on either way with your recipe or with mine. Okay, so we're going to add uh, and do our breadcrumbs. And I'm just going to use like these rolls that I need to use that are getting a little bit. They're not real fresh anymore. They're not moldy or anything like that. But they're just they're just getting starting to get a little stale. So bread that you want to get rid of, or you can use any kind of bread you want. You can use regular bread if you if that's all you have. Just something to make your breadcrumbs out of. So I make quite a few breadcrumbs, and because it stretches your meat a little further, and it works just just great um, with a lot of breadcrumbs, you can do it however you want to. But it works really well with these uh, with the rolls. So okay, so I'm going to pulse this. Actually, I'm going to turn it on for a few. Okay, so I'll let that go for just probably five to ten seconds, if that. And this is kind of what consistency we've got, so this is what we're going to use. And you can kind of see about how much it is. And I'm adding two eggs. I've already added one. I'm going to go ahead and add my second. I'm going to add some uh, ground black pepper. You can use fresh or you can just use the ground if you want. Um, that's quite a bit, but this is going to make a lot of meatloaf. So and you don't have to use that much. Like I said, it's optional. We like we like black pepper, so about a half a teaspoon is fine. I'm using some ground sea salt. And sea salt, uh, it takes a little bit more sometimes than your regular salt. So adjust this to whatever kind of salt that you have. Like I said, this is my recipe. You can totally adjust this to however you want to and just use this method for the meatloaf of doing it in the uh, crock pot like this. I added one 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. And now you normally could add like anything that you like, like any vegetables or anything, onion, whatever you like in it. I have a very picky child who does not eat onion and I don't want to fight him on eating this so I'm just going to substitute some onion powder and just leave it at that. Um, but you can do anything or you could chop it very finely and sneak it in however you want. Sometimes I do that but I'm in kind of a hurry so we're just going to go with the onion powder. So this is kind of what we've ended up with after I've mixed it all. And now I'm just going to form it into a loaf and put it in the crock pot and I'll come right back and show you what it looks like. All I have here is just some ketchup, brown sugar, and juice. I'm going to microwave it for just a second just to kind of bring it together and mix it up. And then we're just going to put it right on top of our meatloaf. loaf. Okay, so you can kind of see here, I don't know if I can get a good light on this. But um, how that sauce is just kind of dripping down the sides and everything. And that's why we left our meatloaf 
kind of simply season with just salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. We didn't add like uh, Lipton onion soup mix or any of that stuff. We just kept it kind of simple because this sauce is going to actually cook into our meatloaf and it's going to put a nice glaze on top. And then if you needed to, my husband likes like lots of ketchup on his, so if you need to add some at the end, you could of course I'll always do that if you have someone who likes the ketchup on top. But this is going to, I'll show you kind of how it cooks. It's going to kind of just cook into it as well as make a nice glaze on top. So now all I'm doing is I've got our potatoes and I'm just kind of tucking our foil right there and tucking them around there like so so it doesn't get on our sauce and then I'm gonna put our lid on it I'm gonna plug this in because I don't have it plugged in yet and I'm gonna let this go you could do this on high or low I like to do it on uh, high because I always wait to the last minute to get mine going and I'll do this before we go to church uh, and I'm gonna plug it in and put it on high and let it go for probably about three and a half to four hours or you could do this on low for like eight or nine hours uh, and go to work or whatever and come back and it'll be perfect dun, 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 dun. Okay, see all that grease? Can you see that? The bottom. Okay, so here's the meatloaf. And here's the potato. Okay, so here's everything all plated up. But the potato, you can do the potato however you want to. And the, the meatloaf with the extra ketchup on top afterwards. So there you go, and you can do this with mashed potatoes or however you want to do it, but uh, the, the baked potatoes is just pretty easy to throw it all in there together. So anyway, hope you like it.